You're watching The American on ESPN. It's the final day of the American Women's Swimming and Diving Championships at Robson Lindley Aquatic Center in Dallas. We'll crown a champion later on tonight. And welcome in poolside. I'm John Little alongside Smacker Miles, former UT swimmer, and Natalie Calabat, who dove at USC, was a Pac-12 champ as well. We've had four great days, three to this point, three and a half, I guess, Smacker. Right now, FIU has the lead. Is there any way, SMU, can catch them? Yes, they both have a high number of finalists in several events tonight. There's still sw six swimming events, starting with the mile, then we have the 200s of the stroke, the 100 free, and the 400 free relay. So we have a great lineup tonight. Meanwhile, we've got team diving tonight, Natalie. This is going to be a lot of fun, a new event for the American. Yes, first time it's scored, too. It is diving's version of a relay. So it's worth the same amount of points as a relay in swimming. And it's three divers, six categories done on all levels, one meter, three meter, and the platform. And so we'll be watching through those points to really ramp up in this one. So we look at yesterday and Smacker, the day three recap, I think FIU, Rice, and SMU all had their big moments yesterday. There were so many different stars that stood out in different events, and it was a heavy point scoring time for the top three, but still a really exciting meet and kind of an even meet, as you mentioned earlier. And again, the platform diving won by Nicole Stambo and then SMU winning the relay last night. We talked about those standings, Florida International out in front, SMU in second, Rice in third right now. But we've got a lot of events to go tonight. Each of these teams have the opportunity to move up a place or two. So you're not going to see North Texas probably finish in the top three, but there's a lot of points to be scored. And these swimmers can step up and step their teams up in the rankings. And the way we get things started this evening is with the women's 1650 freestyle. This is the miler. This is the event that you specialized in. And this is how we get it started. You see the uh, 200 back, the 100 free, 200 breast, 200 fly, and then team diving before we go into the 400-yard freestyle relay to close things out uh, tonight. But what makes this event so grueling and unique? The mile is the toughest event from a distance and time standpoint. So there's a lot of time for lead changes, a lot of strategy that goes into this. And with it being the longest event, of course, it's natural. You're going to train the longest for it as well. So these are the people that are in the pool the most. They're in the pool first and last, and they do tough sets longer. Their taper doesn't start nearly as early as everyone else's. So these are people who work hard in every aspect of the sport. And this is a specialty that Rice and FIU do very well in. As you look at the lane assignments, at the bottom of your screen in lane number one, that's Ella Dyson, who won the mile last year, also took silver in the 500 free on Friday. She's looking for a repeat. Sophie Kirk of FIU in lane two. And then you've got Ellie Meriden, the senior from FIU, in lane three. Shannon Campbell in lane four from Rice. Another Rice Al, Amelia Kane in five. Harley Cortois Davies in lane six. Var Erling daughter Idisgard in lane seven. Another FIU Panther. And then Sydney Mullen of Tulane at the top of your screen, the sophomore in lane number eight. And like we mentioned, Ella Dyson won this event last year. And this takes a while. You know, you think about swimming a mile, it takes a minute. 16 minutes and 24 seconds last year for Ella Dyson uh, to win this event as a freshman. How does that stack up as far as uh, a good time for this particular event? This is one of the events that isn't super technical. So sometimes you will see young swimmers doing really well in it. Depends on their club teams. A lot of times club teams just put in a lot of yardage, so it's natural that they come in with that yardage and that distance base, the stamina for the mile. And the milers aren't going to be the heaviest lifters in the weight room. They're going to do more reps, and that also aligns more so with high school training. And let's go ahead and throw it to break for a moment. We'll be back with more of the mile next. Welcome back into Dallas. We're in heat number three of the 1650 freestyle to get started with day four of the American Swimming and Diving Championships. And you are looking live at our leader right now in lane number one. That is Ella Dyson. Dyson won this championship last year. Meanwhile, in second place, it's Amelia Kane from Rice. And Rice just does really well in this event. And then Shannon Campbell of Rice is in third right now as well. How much does it help to have 
top distance sisters, if you will, training alongside you to push you um, through this very grueling event. That's really the way in distance swimming. You want to train with the best to have that in practice and to have that motivation not just swimming a distance set, set by yourself. So a lot of the best teams in the country are either distance heavy or sprint heavy. And the distance swimmers migrate to one another. So it's no surprise to see four FIU Panthers and three Rice Owls in one heat, nearly taken up by two teams. And then Sydney Mullen of Tulane in the outside. So she will have to represent for the Green Wave. Meanwhile, this is the final heat, so this represents the top times from basically the regular season, the top times that were to, uh, uh, turned in uh, by each of these swimmers. However, we have had some preliminary or some other heats as well, two other heats, and Sadie Covington had the best time there in a time of 17.09. Now, that may not factor at all into the top eight, or it might. Basically, you're racing against the clock here, not necessarily just the eight swimmers in the pool at this moment. This is a unique event in that sense that the earlier heats can score in the top eight, and these swimmers know that, and they know that even if what they see next to them is that they're in a lock for fourth or that they're in a lock for seventh or eighth, that that is not necessarily the case. So their coaches coach them to that. This is the finals of the event, so it's a little bit of a lucky you didn't have to swim a prelim, but go as fast as you can like you would any final. There's Tulane Sydney Mullen, the sophomore, in lane number eight, part of this final heat of the 1650 freestyle, and it's really unique for Tulane. They went for a couple years without even having a pool on campus. And so our Smacker Miles got to talk with Tulane head coach Amanda Caldwell about their brand new natatorium. Coach, going into year two, what are you looking forward to most about this meet and being back here? Uh, improvements. I mean, the energy. Our, this team has always had great energy at meets, but we brought in half the team is new and it's contagious. So watching them get excited and the returners get excited around it. We have a lot of good performances we're looking forward to, even though we're still small. You talked about improvements and energy. Where do you expect to see those most? On the deck. I, we talk about, you know, being wave makers and creating waves. And like right now, our divers are doing that. They were out last year, all red shirted. And we have two that made it back in consoles and they're setting that tone. So each Race is an opportunity, competition, just keep creating the wave and everyone on deck is going to help with that and keep it passing along. And we're going to shake off any bumps on the road, but we're going to ride all the waves. Coach, you guys are new and improved, especially in training with the pool this year. I grew up swimming in the old two pool and now there's a new one. What are you looking forward to most with having been able to use that resource to your advantage? Oh, it's been great. I mean, we're able to spread out more. We're able to have some permanency and consistency, even with training right now and like resting, trying to schedule time and van ride people out to some place. Everyone's staying there for a longer period. You know, as a swimmer, taper time, like when you're done, you're done. It's nice to be able to get up and walk out at, when you're done. And, and looking forward to even March 1st, the team gets to see their new locker room. They've never had their own locker room. So that Exciting. reveal is coming up as well. So that's been every day, something new, exciting, popping up for them within the facility. So it's nice to have a home. Beyond the current team, you also get to recruit with that pool. How much of an advantage is that? Oh, it's been huge. I mean, I had a great opportunity with our 24s to, as construction was going on, to go on deck and do FaceTimes as they're doing the construction, show them what's going on. Yes, there will be a pool here. All our incoming freshmen that are here right now, showing them this is what's going on. It is happening. And then carrying that in and just every update, it, all the way down to you've swam in the old pool. The bulkhead had fused itself, so it wasn't movable. We have a movable bulkhead. It's, it's able to move, and we can set up the pool into long course meters. So having that is great, especially for internationals. I, most only want to come over if they could do some meter training. That is recruiting dedication, going to the construction pool. Hard hat and everything. FaceTime, I yep. love it. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Coach. No, thank you.
and Smacker as a student athlete in the past yourself. I, I can't imagine how much that would mean to those kids to stick through it when they've really not had the convenience of that on-campus, on-site, um, you, you know, uh, place to swim over the last few years. It's one example of teams in swimming doing it because they love the sport and doing it because they care deeply. And it's not because it's easy. It's not because it's fun. They were driving across the city to get to a pool to practice. I mean, you're driving to a really hard workout. And it's such a testament to what the sport is, and that is that hard work pays off in the pool. So here's what we're seeing in the 1650 freestyle right now. It's all Rice Owls at this point. Ella Dyson, there she is at the bottom of your screen in lane number one. And then toward the middle, you've got Amelia Kane and Shannon Campbell, who are in at two and three respectively uh, for the Rice Owls. So, so far, the Owls dominating this event. Uh, we're a little bit more than halfway home. Now, I know in uh, when you run a marathon or something like that, uh, they say, what, uh, mile, is it mile 19 where just everything falls apart for you? Is there a similar experience when you're going through the mile and trying to swim it? I think one of the toughest parts of the mile is how bad it hurts before you get halfway. Mm. So I think that that halfway, not feeling like you're downhill, is really tough. So you get to the 800 and you still have an 850 to go. And that is where you see people fall off or question their training or question themselves. And the difference of 0.2 or 0.3, you know, you, do, you split 0.2 difference on five different 50s and all of a sudden that's a second difference. It's starting to look like you're adding on a body length. So staying consistent and not giving up an easy 50 or taking a 50 off is so important. And that's a lot easier said than done, but it is the grueling aspect of the mile that is the mile. So a few more lengths of the pool to go in this one, about 20 lengths at least to go in the pool. And so we will be back for the finale. But we did explain to you earlier, we're gonna have that team diving event a little bit later on this evening. And one of the divers for the University of North Texas who will be participating is Sailor Hawkins. And she had a chance to sit down uh, with our Morgan Uber uh, to talk about what it means to be a, a leader um, in the student athlete organization at the University of North Texas and also conference wide. Right now, we are joined by North Texas diver Sailor Hawkins. Sailor, it's a busy week for you gearing up for the American Swimming and Diving Championships. You're also a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee known as SAC, planning the Powerful Minds Initiative. First off, what is Powerful Minds and the impact that it has on student athletes across the American? So Powerful Minds is just an opportunity for us to give back to the student athletes and shows that mental health matters and is able to give them a break from being a student and being an athlete. Um, it also gives them a chance to see the resources that the university has. Um, and some things we have planned this week are um, a positive message board in our athletic center. Um, it's like a make one, take one kind of situation. So you put a positive message up there. If you feel like you need to take one, you can take it with you. Um, we have a feeling breakfast for the athletes. Um, something that some people are really excited about is we're going to have a space where athletes can bring their dogs and people can just come and play with them. We have a few more um, that we are still trying to plan, but we're excited for it. That's awesome, being able to really enact change on your campus like that. And you've also had the opportunity to enact change serving on the sport committee uh, across, you know, the American campuses, different head coaches, uh, leaders on these campuses. You're involved in those meetings. How has your voice as a student athlete really made a difference with the sport committee for women swimming and diving? Um, I think it's a big deal, and it's great that we finally have a student athlete represented in these meetings. Um, it gives a chance for our voices to be heard. Um, some of the big things and changes that we had this year was we have the diving team event taking place, and it counts for scoring this year. With you being a diver, why was that something? Give us, you know, first the background and insight on really what that event is and why that was important to you. Um, so basically the event is 
three divers compete two dives each and the scores come together as a total score. Um, it gives the divers an opportunity to compete as a team. Although it is like a team event, mostly diving is individual. Um, we're out there competing by ourselves. This gives us an opportunity to compete with our teammates and put our scores together to try to make it up on the podium. So from a national scale, you know, why is this so important and exciting for divers, you know, not just here in the American, but really across the country? Um, it gives us another opportunity to compete and score more points um, and put it towards our team total score. Um, it also like just gives us a chance to be like make as much of an impact as the swimmers do because they get to do a few more events than we do. So it's exciting. Obviously, the team diving event something you'll be looking forward to, but also with it being conference championship week, what other things are you looking forward to being out there and competing with your team? Um, I'm excited to see how our team handles it. We do have three freshmen on the diving side. Um, and overall, our team has been working so hard, and I just can't wait to see what we do. Sailor, thank you so much. Best of luck to you all. Appreciate the time. And those team that team event concludes uh, Sunday night, where we will also find out the team winners. We appreciate the time, and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks so much to Sailor Hawkins and our Morgan Uber. Again, you'll see Sailor in the team diving event for the University of North Texas later on this evening. And we bring you back into the mile now, well past the three-quarter mark, and Smacker uh, well out in front. Just a great performance by Ellett Dyson, who continues to swim in splits that are under 30 seconds. Great observation. You're exactly right in telling the story of what the mile, it's breaking the 1630 code. So, of course, to do that, you have to split under 30. And Ella Dyson has probably only split a 30 one time. So she is going under 30, under 1630 more and more each time she does a split, where Shannon Campbell and Amelia Kane are flirting with it in the middle of the pool right now. One a little bit under, one a little bit over, and they'll probably finish right around that 1630 barrier. But it's tough to do, and Ella Dyson has been out amazingly consistent and is now dropping her splits down as she picks up her pace, and she's on a bell lap, and she will probably finish this having done only 150 and as a 30-second split. So unbelievable consistency. Absolutely. Ella Dyson, the winner last year, and as she comes in, Ella Dyson, the champion, back-to-back -back in the mile. And the Rice Owls win once more in the 1650. And they also sweep the medal stand. In second, it's Amelia Kane. And in third, Shannon Campbell. And just like the Rice Owls did in the 500 free, they went one, two, three. They also go one, two, three in the mile. I think if you pulled every team in here on what it would be most special to sweep in, they would say the mile because it's the toughest event to train for. So if all three of you can put it together and, and succeed and then be up there with each other as a true distance group, that is as special as a podium could really be. And as we get a look at the last swimmer to come in, that's Sydney Mullen of Tulane. She finishes in 17 12, 67. And that will drop her, it looks like somewhere around 10th or 11th. Sadie Covington is going to move into 8th. But here's that final flourish by Ella Dyson. Doesn't breathe from the flags in at the end of a mile. A true champion. We love to see it. <laughs> 16, 21, 98. She knocks about two seconds off her winning time from last season. So as a freshman and a sophomore, Ella Dyson goes back to back in the American Athletic Conference Championship uh, mile. Man, what a special start to what promises to be an amazing career for Ella Dyson. There you see Ella Dyson with Amelia Kane behind her and then Shannon Campbell. Those were the same three that were all on the medal stand in the 500 free as well. The ability to do the 500 well is great and a lot of mid-distance people can come up to the 500. 
but it's a lot of selflessness for them to be 500 freestylers that are going to go podium the mile. So it's not the most fun event, and this is one where they are absolutely fighting for rice and putting the team on their back to some extent. Coach Houston of Rice in his 21st season. Just uh, you can tell how proud he is of his swimmers. But he's got that toughness mentality about him. You know, he's uh, an outstanding swimmer in his own right. And then on top of that, I loved how we talked about how leading into the championships these last few weeks, the Rice team's been doing a lot of fun things to keep it loose, like bringing non-conventional water bottles to practice and things like that. And so... Girls were just like bringing baggies of water and, you know, like cutting in a hole in it to, to drink or, or bringing like a, a, a kettle and a straw. So it, it's just, it, yes, they train really, really hard, but he's trying to keep it loose too. Hearing him talk about his team and the things they do as a team and the way he trains and his philosophy was a lot of fun. He's a passionate guy. I could have listened to him for a long, long time and he cares about his team and that's what shows when you swim really well in the mile it means you are bought in and he said that he loves to coach the distance group <laughs> he even admitted i like to watch the sprinters i like to coach the distance group so that says a lot about who they are as a team and they seem like a very together team as well they've bounced back from some relay adversity and they've been outstanding it, they he said that they expected to be better than they've been all season and they have been absolutely that so Hopefully we'll get to hear from him at some point about his surprise or his expectation and how, if this fulfilled it or not. And I this, would think it does. Yeah, this Rice program is really special already. And then uh, Coach Houston said, I don't, he never really said rebuilding, but he said that they lost a lot of points off of last year's team. And so he kind of looked at it as, as a fresh slate this year. So for a fresh slate, it's been a really good season. Absolutely, and they still have some good swims to come tonight and an opportunity to move up from points from that event. Having three people in the final heat and having three people finish on the podium, they've moved up Ella Dyson out of lane one, so that would not have been a predicted point score for the Owls. One of the interesting things about this mile event is that SMU did not end up scoring in the mile this time around. Meanwhile, FIU, yeah, they didn't win, but they did have four, five, six, and seven. Plus, you look down uh, a little bit further, plus they had nine in Ryan Flynn, plus Gabriel Perrier Lynch is gonna score a few points as well. That's gonna help FIU trying to hold off SMU. Swimming is a partial scholarship sport, and a lot of times you're gonna put your money where the relays are. So it's, it's a strategy, and if you give more money to the distance group, you can podium finish like that. And a lot of recruiting strategy shows when it comes to the mile. Fourth place for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Meriden. And now your top three ladies in the 1650 freestyle. There's a bronze medal for Rice University's Shannon Campbell. Silver medal for Rice University's Amelia Kane. Amelia also hit the NCAA B cut level. And your 2024 champion with an NCAA B cut time of 16 21 98. Back to back goals now for the sophomore from Rice University, Ella Dyson. You can't do much better than that. One, two, three in the most grueling distance event we got and a really nice way to start day four and the championship night for the Rice Owls. They came in third uh, to the night and they're gonna pick up a lot of points based on this evening's effort by those three. And FIU finishes in uh, fourth through seventh as well. So. I have a feeling that the uh, point standings are going to be changing just a little bit at the end of all this as uh, Rice tries to creep in on SMU. And Florida International picked up a whole boatload of points based on uh, 
uh, the uh, way that they were able to sweep the podium here. And our Natalie Calabat is standing by with a back-to-back -back winner. Ella, back-to-back -back golds, three seconds faster than your time last year, and you sweep the podium with your teammates. What did this win mean to you? It meant a lot. I'm really happy to be up here with my teammates, both in the 500 and the mile. We've been training so hard together, pushing each other day in and day out, and it means a lot to be up there with them. And with a PB as well, it's a great feeling. And for Rice as a whole, with the team point standings, to just dominate this race, what does this mean to your program overall? Yeah, I definitely think we have a really strong distance program. Seth's a great coach, and it's just so fun to be able to train with them and push each other every day. Your splits were under 30. Can you talk about your consistency in this event? How do you attack it? Yeah, I think you just have to go in feeling relaxed because it's so such a long race and it really helps to keep a steady momentum um, it's tra training um, really helps me to build confidence I can do it and then I guess just be confident in the race um, and it's super helpful having my teammates near me um, we can just push each other congratulations Ella thank you so much thank you congratulations to Ella Dyson and the rest of the Rice Owls who sweep the podium Coach Seth Houston getting it done. We'll take a look at those standings coming up and we'll also have the 200 backstroke on the way as day four, the final continues on ESPN. Welcome back into Dallas. Day four of the American Women Swimming and Diving Championships at Robson and Lindley Aquatic Center in Dallas. Back with Smacker Miles and Natalie Calipat. I'm John Little. Here are the overall team standings, Smacker and Florida International. Uh, thanks to their multifaceted finish in the mile. They had a lot of milers out there, and SMU did not score. And you see that FIU has opened up their lead even more expansive. It's hard to have a four-person final heat not add up in your favor. Unless someone gets DQ'd, you're pretty much auto-slotted for a bunch of points. And then with SMU not scoring in the event, it added to the Panthers' lead in a big way. So SMU will have to come back in the 200s of stroke and the 100 free. Meanwhile, Rice is really, uh, you know, putting uh, their case in that even without a diving team in this competition, they're going to be on the podium at the end of the night. But there might still be a chance for some other teams to creep up, like Tulane, who has a lot of swimmers in the final of the backstroke. But here's the consolation backstroke with Brianna Gelinu of Rice in the bottom of your screen, Amelia Robertson from FAU in lane two. Diana Kolb is in lane three from North Texas. Ava Hamlet from Rice. And then you've got Lene Gipperth from FIU in lane number five. Lane six occupied by Roberta Searcy of Florida Atlantic. CJ Kovac from SMU in lane number seven. And then Elena Deinhardt from ECU at the top of your screen. Again, we score the top 16 in each of these events. And so for FIU as they try to hold off SMU or for SMU as they try to gain some ground, Rice as they try to move into silver medal type spot, each and every point is so huge. The consoles are so important for depth points too. It's not what you're gonna look back and remember at the end of the meet, but they're points that contribute over time. And a lot of times they explain the story of especially the middle of the meet, the people who end up between fourth and sixth. A lot of times it's depth points. And Ava Hamlet, you saw her a moment ago, is the top time in the consolation round. SMU with C.J. Kovac out there, the transfer from Missouri. Elena Deinhardt from East Carolina getting a chance to put her name on the board. She's a freshman out of Miami. The 200 back was one last season by someone who's not even in the league anymore. And so this really is going to be a wide open race going into the finals. Really looking forward to seeing how the finals go. And of course, uh, this consolation round as well. The meet record of 152.69 by Matea Samardzic from SMU. That happened back in 2017. 
What's the key in the 200 back? The 200 back or the 200 of stroke are longer than the 200 free, so there's a lot more time to fall off pace-wise. So you have to be light on your legs in the first 50 of the 200 back because it's heavy on your legs. It's hardest, probably the hardest event on your lower body. And we're underway in the 200 backstroke consolation round. Again, Ava Hamlet in lane four from Rice had the top time that did not qualify for the finals, a 159.46. But in doing so, she shaved about two seconds off her best time in the regular season, if you will. Lene Gipperth of FIU also had a sub two minute time in the qualifying rounds here at SMU and at the first turn you got Amelia Robertson for FAU out in front after lap number one. Ava Hamblett in second. How key is what you do underwater in the backstroke? It's really important. Backstroke is an underwater kick one event so they do a lot of kick sets under and above water and a lot on their quads. With it being all one variation of kicking, it's hard on your muscles. In the IM, you get to switch it up. So you're using a little bit different, same major muscles, but different smaller muscles. The tuner back is just a lot on your legs the entire time. So you want to start light on your legs, hammer the middle hundred, and come back with anything you have left. That a leap change as we got to the halfway point. Lene Gipperth, the freshman from FIU, in the lead with Ava Hamlet of Rice in second, and it is Gifford and Hamlet that look like they're going to go the distance right next to each other. They look like they're synchronized kicking into that wall. Hamlet takes the lead now. 13 one hundredths of a second over Gifford, and right now Diana Kolb of UNT is in third. And the final length of the pool Rice's Ava Hamlet with that first stroke. Gipperth right behind. A great look at it. Coming toward the wall. And Hamlet has it. Ava Hamlet in a 158-14. Shaves more time off her top score. Lene Gipperth of FIU finishes in second with Amelia Robertson making a final push and finishing just under two minutes in third place for Lord Atlanta. Hamlet swam a smart race. She held back a lot in the beginning of the race. She let other people take the lead. And then she was strong on the middle 100 and finished better than anyone else. So a smart and strong race, a gutsy back 50. And it, she earns that console title. She's over a second faster than her prelim swim. So the obvious comment here is that she could have been into the finals. Good to see her pick up those points for Rice. Just edging out FIU. Where do you think she won that one? Because those two in the middle of the pool were going back and forth uh, for the final oh, 75 yards or so. Where did Hamlet win it? She won it strength-wise. She won it in the weight room and in training. Her stroke isn't perfectly smooth, and she bends her knees a little bit on her kick, but her Underwater catch is really good. She does a great job with her upper body, and her walls are dominant, too. So she won that on being tough in training. So the 200 back consolation round goes to the Rice House to pick up a few more points. Ava Hamlet, the sophomore. Over Lene Gipperth, the freshman from FIU out of Sweden. Now time to turn our attention to the 200 back final, and it could be a special one for the Tulane Green Wave. Let's go. I need that kind of attitude and energy in my life. I talked to her yesterday. She's really cool. She's an academic advisor at SMU. I know, John, I cracked the code of our cool leader out of the walkout. She is excited to hear the song each time. She knows to go when they turn it up. And I can only imagine seeing her and being like, no, I'm not too nervous. I can do this. Look at that. Do you want that job? I do. You do? I told her that. OK. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Maybe we can get that for you next year in the American Championships. Just for, just for one event. We'll see. For one event. I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. 
So lead, let's meet the competitors in the 200 back final. Riley Trout of FAU at the bottom of your screen. Andrea ZB from Tulane, one of four Green Wave swimmers in this event. And you got Mimi Filkin from Rice in lane three. Amina Leguizamon Leal in lane four. She had the top qualifying time for SMU. Victoria Raymond in lane five. And then Quinlan Heinerfeld in lane six. Megan Drover Smith from Florida Atlantic in lane seven. And Grace Dale from Tulane at the top of your screen in lane eight. Remember, Amina Leal finished second in the 100 back last night. I'm Imogen Mears won it, but she is not in this event. Imogen Mears from Rice. And only two of last year's finalists are in this final. It was Liao and Trout. Liao finished sixth last year. Trout was eighth. And the top four finishers last season were all freshmen. How odd is that? That is interesting. We'll have a new champion this season. And many Leal in lane four, the top qualifying time in a 156.42, which was not a season best for her, but we'll see if the SMU Mustang is able to kick it into high gear, or will Victoria Raymond, the freshman from Tulane challenger, Mimi Filkin is there as well as a top timer. She had a 158.17 in the qualifying. But through the first lap of four, it is Jimena Leal out in front. My early prediction is that she holds on. She comes off the wall really deep because her underwaters are so good. And she wouldn't be in the middle of the pool if she didn't know what she was doing. See how deep she comes off the wall? Does her that just take strength? And it's, it's how you take the angle to the wall. It's timing the wall as, as your feet come over, but it's also knowing your trajectory to the surface because you're faster and deeper underwater. We are halfway home. Yes, she is in first. Victoria Raymond, the freshman from Tulane, in second. And another Green Wave swimmer, Quinlan Heinerfeld, in lane six, is in third. The all-time meet record in this one, a 152-69 from SMU's Matea Samarzik back in 2017. Halfway home, Liao had a 150-69. Um, kind of split there, and so we'll have to see if she threatens this meet record or not. She's out in front still by a second on Raymond. That final kick deep into the water for Jimena Liao. The sophomore from Columbia is out in front. And Liao trying to hold off Victoria Raymond, the upstart freshman. Liao coming to the wall in a time of 155-19 for the win. Second place to Victoria Raymond of Tulane. And then Rice's Mimi Filkin finishes on the podium with a bronze finish and a final lap of 29-38. Laguzman's pretty much picture perfect as far as technique. She keeps her head still. She stays in line as far as her stroke goes. She, nothing's out of line. There's very little areas of drag in her stroke. So she did start to fall off a little bit as far as strength and just being tired at the end of the race. But when you're that good technically, her head is so still. Her body position because of where her head sits is great. She stays right on the surface of the water. Her kick stays consistent. She wasn't going to fall off that bad. 155.19 is almost a second better than her best time this season. You remember SMU head coach Ozzy Quevedo telling us that it was really a tough season for her last season, and uh, she even considered just uh, kind of going home to Columbia, uh, but she came back, and it is paying off with a gold medal finish in the backstroke finals. An exciting event to watch. It's so fun to watch. Back to is a pretty stroke, and then you add the walls into it. She came up at the 10 meter mark every single time. The last wall, she was about a half, like a half body short for the first time. So you knew she was starting to hurt, but she stayed so consistent every wall, like clockwork. And it's one of those where you draw it up like that, and it's very, very hard to do. And she did it very successfully. 
Backstroke finals going to the SMU Mustangs. When we come back, we'll have the podium presentation, interviews, and on the other side, the 103 is coming up too here on ESPN. Welcome back into Dallas and then at the Guizamont Leal, Columbia, and SMU taking down the field in the 200 backstroke. Just a great performance by her and the rest of the competitors. And let's go to our public address announcer for the announcements of the times. Fourth place for Quinlan Hennerfeld. And now your top three ladies in the 200 yard backstroke. It was a bronze medal for Rice University's Naomi Philkin. Silver medal for Tulane University's Victoria Raymond. I love you, Victoria! And your 2024 champion with the final time, 1 to 55 19. Gold for the sophomore from SMU, Jimena Leguzimon. She was second in the 100 back last night, coming up just short to Imogen Mears of Rice. But in the 200 back, Amena Leguzamon Leal gets it done for the SMU Mustangs. And you can see that she is feeling good after that outstanding effort. The joy of your last personal individual event is different because you know you're done being nervous. So some of the joy on the podium tonight is different than what we've seen in previous nights for good reason. And she's with our Natalie Calabat. A gold medal and a personal best, 155-19. How did you attack this race tonight? It was so fun. I mean, yesterday was a pretty good job in the 100 bag, but I get the second place. And now just I did my best for the 200. That is my favorite race. Tremendous points for your team. How does it feel to contribute so much to the greater picture for SMU? I feel so good and also it's like, I appreciate the old support that my team has to me. And this is all that I pay for a life. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolute joy from Jimena Leal as she picks up the win for SMU. Azi Quevedo in his first year with the SMU Mustangs. We talked about how taking over for a legend is never easy. He has done that. And SMU closing in a little bit on Florida International thanks to that last event. It's an exciting race between two and three and then four, five, six, seven. So there's still a lot of points to be earned. And then with relays being double points, the final event is really important as well. Remember FIU in their first year in the American last season came up just short to a Houston team that had dominated the team's events in women's swimming in the AAC year in and year out. They won their seventh straight title last year, Florida International, in a meet where points really ratcheted up, finished just 10 points back as they scored 1,300 points and were that close to Houston. They're trying to win it this time around. We go to the 100 freestyle, consolation style here. Michaela Durkin of ECU at the bottom of your screen, Anna Luisa Deson of FIU in second. And then a lot of FAU, including Izzy Jones in lane three, Bright Belisle in lane four. And then you've got Umi Diop from FIU in lane five, Jessica Spilko of FIU in lane six. Charlie Clements, a freshman from East Carolina in lane seven, and Julia Earnshaw in lane number eight at the top of your screen. Belisle had the best time of those that did not qualify for the final in a time of 50-45 in the 100 free. Right, Bell Lyle had a very nice performance last night as well as she finished silver in one event too. So she'll try to 
this time pick up a win, although it uh, may be in a situation where she's playing for nine. Umi Diop, the sophomore from FIU, stayed in the water longer than anybody else, and we'll see how that helps her out as she makes the kick turn right near the top of the standings as they come near halfway home, and Diop looks to have a slight advantage. And Jessica Spilko to her right actually touches first with Michaela Durkin of ECU in second right now. As many of these freestyle events go, especially the 50 and the 100, it could be anybody's game. And coming home, it does look like Diop's out in front. Diop reaching, the rest reaching, and Umi Diop does win the consolation round of the 100 free, 50-25. 16 100s better than Bri Belisle, and a third place finish for ECU's Michaela Durkin. FIU comes away with the win in this heat, a very heavy Panther heat, and the next heat has five SMU Mustangs. Five SMU Mustangs in the A final of the 100 free means what, John? It means that the 400 free relay they're going to have to kick someone out of the A final. That, That's The race in the A final. They're going to have to choose who doesn't go into their relay. So likely, if I had to guess, there's a good chance that they're doing it based on who gets fifth of the SMU Mustangs on this heat. Ooh. It's a very straightforward way to do it. Let them race it out. Wow. So that's how a lot of coaches will do it. Of the inside there. <laughs> Congratulations to Umi Diot. By the way, she has Olympic aspirations for Senegal. She's also French. Would love to see her in the Olympics coming up this summer. A win for Lial of SMU moments ago, and she wants to see the 103 go to the Mustangs too, but there are some top times in this event. Oh, you look up and down the roster right here. There is a lot of talent in the 103. A lot of talent here. Goodman Sauter is a very familiar name in lane four with the top seed already swimming in NCAA B cut with 49-2. That's a really fast prelim time. 5-49 in the prelims. And I think there's a good chance it takes 48 to win it tonight. In Ravandon Bush, at the bottom of your screen in lane, screen in lane one, Lucrecia Napolitano in lane two. Deanna Santa Maria, the freshman from FIU in lane three. Johanna Kuman's daughter, with the top time in qualifying in lane four. Imogen Mears, her nemesis, I think, in lane number five from Rice. She won the 53 in just absolute dominant fashion, you'll remember, a couple nights ago. And then you've got Shayna McLeod, who's had a really good championship meet as well for North Texas. Isabella Bedoya from SMU and Tiffany Ruin from SMU. For the 100 free final, the meet record 47.95. Jacqueline Keery of Cincinnati back in 2017. Imogen Mears from Bromley, England, so special. as is Gumen's daughter right next to her from Iceland. The test of strength and power for 100 yards. Here we go. saw Imogen Mears stay in the water for longer than anybody else in lane five. Johanna Guman's daughter was just behind her, but it is those two at that first turn as they race toward the halfway mark in the 100 free. Imogen Mears won the 50 free, and she also has the lead here in the 100 free. Second place, Lucrecia Mat Napolitano from SMU, followed by Guman's daughter in lane four. The final 25. And again, it is Imogen Mears trying to put SMU away. Imogen Mears just out in front. Imogen Mears 
goes gold in the 50 and in the 100 with a time of 48.8. Human's daughter from SMU in second and Shayna McLeod of UNT on the podium for bronze. What an exciting podium finish for UNT. Imogen Mears is outstanding. She, she's hard to say that you're not picking her as the winner in any scenario. She's just so strong. She's powerful and technically sound at the same time. She makes it look a lot easier than it is because she, her technique's nearly perfect and then she's strong as well. So when you can maintain perfect technique at a high tempo, it's probably the hardest thing to do because anyone can spin. But if you can spin with that power, then that's where your image and mirrors. She's one of the people that stood out in this meet as just a generational talent in swimming. 48-8 for Imogen Mears, improving her qualifying time by 44 one hundredths. Very impressive. And Gooman's daughter also swam better than she did in prelims at 49.08. But here are the top three. Mears of the 48.8. Johanna Gooman's daughter, 49.08. Shayna McLeod, like you said, the podium finish for North Texas at growing program, getting a bronze. The 100 is so technical as far as it comes down to that last 10 yards and the touch and timing the wall right. It's a little bit easier to time the wall in the freestyle just because you, you, it feels like you have twice as much time and space just based on it being the stroke turnover so quick. It's not like mistiming a fly wall, but so often in the sprint freestyles, it literally comes down to the touch. And Imogen Mears gets the first touch this time. You remember what Brittany Roth, the North Texas head coach, told us about Shayna McLeod? That she has an amazing feel for the water and she can bring it home with the best of them. She's been working on her, you know, effort, I guess, in the weight room. And that obviously leads to better starts. But she brought this one home. It didn't look like she was going to be on the podium. And then she brought it home in the final 25 or 50. I love the feel for the water saying in swimming. It's like the most buzzy swimming thing, the feel for the water. <laughs> but, but what she's getting at is how quickly she can move her tempo and still have a great catch. And her feel for the water being that she's just smooth even when she's sprinting. So it's an exciting time for her. And as you put in that w work in the weight room, if you can match it in the water and have it translate to maintain your speed without your technique falling apart, it can pay off like that. So the sprinters can add some strength and really see it very tangibly in the water. And it's a motivating aspect of the sprinting. But another win for the Rice Owls and Imogen Mears out top. They took a one, two, three in the distance, the one mile. But uh, hey, Coach Houston saying, I, I, can, I can recruit you know, talent that uh, can sprint as well. There's no doubt about that, as Imogen Mears is the proven to be the best of the swimmer, swimmers, at least at this meet. Now, remember, SMU had five different swimmers in that 100 free final. So that's a big reason why, even though Mears picked up the win here, Smacker, SMU has elongated their lead on Rice. Exactly. The, the, the win is only a three-point barrier between second, then when you have that many people scoring at least nine points, it's so hard to make it up. You're not making it up just from one swimmer. It's a, the strength of depth in swimming. And that's the fun part of the team race is that you do, it does take everyone. And even if it's someone that doesn't think it takes them, if you're in a console final, you're part of it. SMU at one point down by 140 points to FIU is starting to close the gap. But there is going to be a 200 breast final later on, Smacker, where FIU has five in the final and SMU has none. And so that is going to help that point total kind of jump and reverse back in FIU's favor, no matter how, who wins it. Apparently, FIU has a breaststroke whisperer because <laughs> it is very tough technically to teach breaststroke. And tough to teach a lot of different breaststrokes depending on body type and strength and distance specialty. So that says that there's something in the water over there. Now your top three ladies. Bronze medal for North Texas's Shayna McLeod. Silver medal for SMU's Johanna Goodman-Sauter.
And your 2024 champion of the final time of 48-80. Gold for the senior from Rice, Imogen Mears. Imogen Mears used to that gold medal feeling. The winner in the 50 free and the 100 free. Remember, Lucrezia Napolitano of SMU last season as a freshman swept the 50, 100, and the 200 free and was part of a 200 free relay gold winning team. Imogen Mears won't get the uh, 200 free, obviously. That's in the rear view, but uh, still, Mears has had an incredible meet. Mears talked to Natalie about having fun before, and I feel like it's safe to say she is having fun, at least based on her places. And Imogen Mears is standing by with Natalie Calabat. Imogen, your final conference championship meet, your third gold. How meaningful was this race to you? Uh, this was definitely the most nerve-wracking one <laughs> because I knew I had the other two in the bank, but I just was really ready to go out and race and give it everything, and that happened to turn out gold, and that's the best thing I can ask for, really. <laughs> Maybe nerve-wracking, but how did you calm those nerves? I think just telling myself that I've done this like a thousand times before, and the 100 free is really the event where my other two events merge, so I was really just excited in the, at the end of the day. 400 free relay next. What is your focus? Um, go back in and try and repeat what I just did and give Rice the best shot to get that elusive relay gold we really won. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. An incredible performer, Imogen Mears, who won the 100 back yesterday, the 50 free a couple nights ago, and the 100 free tonight. The 200 breaststroke is coming up next. Welcome back into Dallas on the campus of SMU, the American Women Swimming and Diving Championship, night number four. John Little back with Smacker Miles, Natalie Calabat, and our entire ESPN crew. We will crown a team champion at the end of the night. Right now, FIU out in front and holding off the SMU Mustangs and the Rice Owls in that order. As we turn our attention to the 200 breaststroke and the consolation round will feature a good hodgepodge of different swimmers from different teams, Michaela Colts, in lane number one at the bottom of your screen. Lane number two is Madeline Lu Madeline Lewis from SMU. And Ellie Meriden from FIU in lane three. Jenna Watson from SMU had the top qualifying time that did not make the finals in lane four. You've got Siri Ennio from Rice, a Finnish freshman. Heidi Bruning, the sophomore from East Carolina with Bilu Bianchi from uh, Florida Atlantic, the freshman in lane seven, and Ella Freeman, also the FAU in lane eight. She's from Athens, Georgia, the sophomore at the top of your screen. There's Jenna Watson out of Flower Mound, just about 30 minutes away. She was eighth in the 400 IM last night, and now looking for what amounts to a ninth place finish in the 200 breast. What's the key to this particular event? establishing your stroke and glide and maintaining the length of the glide. Because as you shorten your stroke, the glide will be less. And as you give up on it, essentially, it, it's hard to, you fall off pace wise. So you want to establish long and strong, dive forward on the first 50, and then decide where your tempo is going to be, tempo and glide, distance per stroke, big distance per stroke event, and then stay there. Watson and Ennio. Both finished at about 215 and a half. And by the way, at the turn, it's Bilu Bianchi for FAU. It's uh, out in front in first place right now, a quarter of the way through. And that, at those times, finished just beyond what you needed to get into the final. It always hurts when you're just there right at the cusp of making it into the final. And I guess you can look at it two ways. I'm going to you know, uh, grit my teeth and try to race as hard as I can, or you can get your dauber down. And it looks as though Jenna Watson has retrieved some of her stroke in her second 50 a lot better than her first. You have to take that 
anger, take it out on the event mentality when you come in ninth, and especially in a tough event. So she just has to prove that she should have been in and focus on maintaining her place in this event. So Jenna Watson, Siri Inio, and then Heidi Bruning of East Carolina, the sophomore. A three-person race right now as they're three quarters of the way home, the final 50, and it was Heidi Bruning of ECU that ran a really nice lap, swam 34-52 to get into first. I like watching brushstroke because so many different strokes can have success, where in every other stroke, fly back and breast, or fly back and free, the same stroke has success. Where this one, they can come higher out of the water or lower in the water and still be really good. Bruning had the lead, but Ennio right there, and it is Siri Ennio that finishes in first, holding off Heidi Bruning, a ninth place finish for the freshman and the fist bump, and Jenna Watson from SMU finishes in third. Big race for Siri, knocking almost a second off her prelim time. Always fun to step up in finals and see that time on the scoreboard and get a good smile out of it. So good for her mastering a really tough event and making it look easy at the end. She finished really, really well. Yeah, doing it in come from behind fashion. Yes, exactly. She picked up her tempo at the end and looked strong doing it. A time of 2.14.85 for Siri Ennio. And drops about three quarters of a second off her qualifying time. And Ennio picks up these points for Rice. Again, East Carolina's Heidi Bruning finishing in second, followed by Jenna Watson of SMU in the 200 breast consolation. Yeah, it may not mean a medal, but it does mean a lot for Rice's prospects as they try to catch SMU for second in this championship. And it is time for the 200 breast final. And you're going to see a lot of FIU Panther gold as a big hug goes to one of the top SMU seniors in Jenna Watson. And with hugs like that, you get the feeling it, it might be one of those last races of the career of Watson. Yes, it's always exciting to be able to celebrate a great swim on a tough event and one you've worked really hard on. So fun to see her embraced after that dominant 200 breast. There is going to be a DQ, though, in lane number four. That is Watson. And so a tough break for her. And so SMU will not score points from Watson's spot. And uh, tough to see for Watson. And so that will make the one, two, three, Siri Ennio, and then Bruning, and then fourth would be Bilu Bianchi of FAU instead. And here come the 200 breast championship round swimmers. A lot of gold, a lot of navy blue involved in this. Five FIU Panthers at the top of the standings at the end of the qualifying. It's not that they just had five of the top eight. They had the top five qualifying times. Think about how Ch Christy Chewy talks. And imagine her being the leader of that group and the breaststroke group and the mid-distance IM group. She, she's fun to listen to. She's, she's talking about... You know, here are my goals, and I'm also nervous. And her saying that she wanted to sweep, I love it. She said it with her chest, and she's out here to do it from lane four. 
More on Chewy in a moment, but here are the lane assignments for the finals. Lily Kramer at the bottom of her screen from Rice. Ingrid Huzar of FIU, a Romanian in lane two. Nicole Frank in lane three, won the 400 IM last night from FIU. Christy Chewy from FIU. She already has four golds, including two individuals. Won this event last year, looking for a repeat. Delaney Gall, a bronze in the 100 breast last night, and fourth at this event last year in lane five. Emma Becker of FIU. You in lane at number six, Nuna Gao, the freshman from Florida Atlantic in lane seven, and then Kaylee Hamlin at the top of your screen, the junior in lane eight. And back to Christy Chewy, who won this event last year. She won the 100 yard at breaststroke. Now this is the 200, won the 200 IM. She has two relay golds. She's looking for her fifth gold of this championship. And I think right now it's between she and Imogen Mears for the top swimmer in this tournament. But Nicole Frank doesn't want to go away either. And we're underway. A long time in the water for Christy Chewy as she starts that glide stroke here in the 200 breast finals. The meet record is 208.66. Andrea Podmanikova of SMU. That was back in 2019. Christy Chewy swam the prelims in a time of 2.11, but she does have a 2.08.95 to her credit this year, so Chewy is capable of going very, very low on this event. Chewy does a really good job staying underwater off the walls in her pullout. She waits a full two seconds before she starts the pull down of the pullout. She's very patient, and that takes a lot of breath control. It takes great stamina from your, stamina from your lung capacity. So it shows that her training, yes, her technique is great, but her training is really solid as well. The end of the first 100 of this 200 breaststroke. Christy Chewy is out in front. Right now, a one-minute pace. Emma Becker in second from FIU, and Nicole Frank Rodriguez making it an FIU sweep, one, two, three. Gull, another FIU swimmer in fourth, and Kaylee Hamlin of ECU in fifth right now. But at this point, it is Christy Chewy, who I think saved a little bit this morning in the prelims for this all-important final. We talked about her coaches trusting her with prelim times and prelim swims, and it's fun to know you have more in the tank going into finals, so good for her able to do that. Again, the meet record is at 208.66. Christy Chewy's best is at 208.95. It is not out of the realm of a, a possibility here that Christy Chewy comes home with a meet record as she turns to the final 25. Christy Chewy, all eyes on that wall as we cross the two-minute mark. Chewy just a few strokes away. Chewy reaching and finishing in 207.99. She has the meet record. And the pool record. She broke both right there. What an unbelievable performance. That's unreal. Again, she was at the NCAAs last year in the breaststroke events, and she shows why right here. That's quick. That's possibly the quickest event, quickest number one finish that we've seen this meet. She's really good. She was underwater almost half of a 200 breaststroke. That is really hard to do. Here she is, long reach, every, every glide. Her strokes are long. She knows her stroke count per 25, and she stays with it. She's consistent, kept her splits under 34 almost the entire way, a 34-0 on the final 50. And she really ended up going for it. For as smart as she swam, she went out fast, too. Wow. Christy Chewy with a meet record, a pool record, in just a touch under 2.08. And again, the meet record was a 2.08.66 from Andrea Podmanikova from SMU back in 2019. And the pool record in this event was a very blistering one as well, 208.59 by Caitlin Dobler. That occurred earlier this season. 
So Christy Chewy with a meet and pool record 207.99, and FIU goes one, two, three. We talked about Christy Chewy's leadership with that group in practice every day going into the event. And sure enough, the Panthers sweep the event. A true testament to tough mid-distance training and great stroke technique. Lots of great drill training, strength training, resistance training, and it pays off for him. Christy Chewy has three gold medals now individually at this event. She's got two more as part of team competition. And FIU owning the American Championships. Welcome back into day number four of the Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. We will crown a champ at the end of the night team-wise. But like we said, there were the five breaststrokers in the final for FIU and now the standings reflect it after a one, two, three, four, six finish for FIU. It now looks like a sizable lead. It now looks different when you have teams in the 500s and then FIU out in front having broken the 700 point barrier. They've scored a lot of the total points on this meet. And when you're one, two, three, four, six on an event, it says that you have done something right in coaching that event. So. Shout out to their staff as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I just find it every time I think about FIU right now, I think about Randy Horner saying, hey, we've got to swim perfectly in order to win this event. I don't know if they've had to swim perfectly, but maybe they've swam better than perfectly. Maybe that's what it's been because he talked about swimming perfectly as 50% best times or more. Feels like they've gone well over that, especially for their top swimmers. Let's hear the top swimmers and their times in the 200 breast. Fifth place for Kaylee Hamblin. Fourth place for Delane Gall. And now your top three ladies in the 200 yard breaststroke. Bronze medal for Florida Internationals, Emma Becker. was a silver medal for Florida Internationals, Nicole Frank Rodriguez. And your 2024 champion with a new meet and pool record time of 207.99. Back to back golds for the senior from Florida International, Christy Chewy. We're getting used to seeing that big smile from Christy Chewy, and FIU sweeps the podium in the 200 breaststroke. Now we're about to talk to Christy Chewy. Do you think she's gonna say that she was nervous coming into this event? What do you think? I think anytime you care about something, there's a little bit of nervous energy, some butterflies behind the blocks, and I think she has mastered channeling that energy and using it to her advantage. It's one of the things I love most about this is hearing from the student athletes and hearing, you know, some personally of what's going on with them and, and, and their struggles and how they triumph over them. Doesn't it just make you passionate about being here when mm. you hear them talk because they care so deeply and they work so hard and seeing that passion come out in the post-race interviews has been so much fun. There's Natalie Calabat with one of her best friends now, Christy Chewy. My best friend here, that's right, Christy. A new meet record, a new pool record. You even hit the program record, a 207.99 that you set back a few years ago. What do you contribute your success to? Um, honestly, I don't know, but I'm happy that I equaled my time I did in freshman year. Um, I didn't really think much about the record. I was just going to just try to hit like a best time again. And I think equaling it today after three days of competing, it's really good. So I'm going to see what else I have in store for NCs if I get invited. <laughs> Five gold medals. Where do you put all of these medals? Um, I bring them home. I give it to my dad. And he puts them in these containers at home that we have because my cupboards are all out of space. So we have to keep them in small containers now. 
So, but it's a secret, but I plan to give two of them to my coaches at the end of the meet for them as a memory to keep because like they have done so much for me. So I, I want to give it to them. That is so admirable. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Congratulations, Christy, again. Thank you. Man, it's about as sweet as it gets, Smacker. It is. Her interviews have been heartwarming. Yesterday was motivating. I was like, yeah. And then today, wow, good for her. And way to go out on top. There's all of it. We've heard, you know, that uh, that she's nervous sometimes. We've heard that she's elated. And now we've heard how grateful she is. As we move into the 200 butterfly and the consolation here in the consolation round, at the bottom of your screen, Catherine Eland from Rice, Maxine Parkinson of SMU in lane two, Gabrielle Pereira Lynch in lane three for FIU. Carlotta Scarpitti had the best time of anybody that did not make the final. She's in lane four for SMU. Right next to her is Sarah Kaloska, the sophomore for East Carolina, also out of London. Maya Vanderhagen from SMU in lane six. Tram Nguyen from North Texas in lane seven. And then Lizzie Lernardus from East Carolina, the senior in lane eight. She's a transfer from the University of Arkansas. One of my favorite moments is that pause right before the start, right before the gun here. And now, for some of these swimmers, it may be their last time in the water. A swimmer like Maxine Parkinson for SMU or Tram Nguyen for North Texas, just depending on times and depending how things transpire for postseason aspirations. A lot of times, swimmers' careers will end in finals of a championship, conference championship meet. And it's tough to not have that in the back of your mind that if you miss out on NCAAs, that this is the final swim and the final moment and the final time in a tech suit. And of course, you can go to the country club and swim some laps, but it, that it would never be the same. So it's important to focus on the race, but also enjoy those moments of nerves behind the blocks and the entire experience. After the first 50, Carletta Scarpitti had the advantage from SMU. And as they are halfway home, Scarpetti still out in front. Sarah Kaloska in lane five from East Carolina is second. And then in lane three, Tram to win from North Texas. Rather in lane seven, but she is third, what I meant to say. This is the consolation of the 200 butterfly. A meet record, a sub 154 back in 2014 from a Louisville swimmer. One more lap to go, and Carlotta Scarpitti has a nice lead, almost a second on Maxine Parkinson, her teammate from SMU, Sarah Kaloska from ECU in third right now. The final 25, and Carlotta Scarpitti, the Italian sophomore, is leaving them in the dust. The SMU sophomore with nearly a full length advantage. And her teammate Maxine Parkinson closes on her at the end to finish second. Third, Sarah Kaloska from ECU. The winning time for Scarpitti, two minutes and 64 one hundredths. Scarpitti knocked a second and a half off her prelim time. Finished really strong, staying under 32 on the final 50. She had a great race. She breathes to the side, which can be an advantage technically, depending on your training and, you know, everything about you, body type, how many times you want to breathe per length. So she has a great stroke, and she stayed with it. Her stroke didn't break down the stretch, and her kick stays strong. So she was outstanding and much improved in that event from this morning. It's a feel-good win in the consolation for a younger swimmer for SMU. You know that the future is bright for this Mustang club as they continue to march forward just in their first year under Ozzy Quevedo. The tuner fly is such a tough event and one where your stroke can truly break down if you don't get enough air in the beginning of the race and that training factors in heavily. So a very impressive performance from an underclassman. 
and she can continue to add on that as her lung capacity grows and her underwaters improve and shoulder strength continues to grow. And here are the finalists for the 200 Butterfly, the final individual event of the 2024 American Women's Swimming and Diving Championship. And it should be a great one. Victoria Raymond with the top seed, a freshman from Tulane. An exciting moment for her to have chosen the walkout song. The freshman goes old school, not necessarily what we would have expected. Yeah, she's a Canadian and she has really done a great job of adapting to the tough life that is a true student athlete in college. And she's just done an outstanding job at a fantastic academic institution in Tulane. The lane assignments for the 200 Butterfly Finals. At the bottom of your screen, Elizabeth Myers from Rice in lane number one. Valentia Becerra from SMU in lane two. She took the bronze in the 100 Fly last night. Ariel Hayon, who won the 100 Fly in a meet record last night in lane three. And then Victoria Raymond, the Canadian freshman from Tulane. Silver in the 100 Fly last night. She goes for gold out of the pole position. Delorius Margney from Florida Atlantic in lane five. Lauren Brantley in lane six from Rice. Kaylee Turner of North Texas in lane seven. And then Emily Hamlin from East Carolina, the sophomore in lane eight. It's youth in Raymond challenging Hayon, a record setter last night. Here we go. There's the start in the 200 butterfly. What are we looking for here, Smacker? The 200 fly is tough. I was just looking at Ariel Hand being in this. But she likes tough events, and there is pride associated with doing tough events. So a lot of team times you'll see distance swimmers or distance teams heavy in the 200 fly. Of course, Rice, the only team with two swimmers in this heat, and they have three in this heat. So another example of Rice being very distance heavy. They work hard, they train hard, and distance freestyle shoulder strength translates in the tuner fly. It's Victoria Raymond out in front with Hay on it just behind, and then Martini, the FAU swimmer, right there in the middle of the pool. So far, that's where this race is, and an impressive start here for Tulane. The freshman going for it right off the bat. Her kick is a little bit uneven, but her upper body is really, really good. She looks pretty comfortable going for it, and that wall is really good. So she's over halfway through. You, you can always fall off, but I don't think she looks like she's spinning or shortening her stroke or not swimming a smart, smart race right now. And by the way, all. halfway home, Valentia Becerra, the senior from SMU, moved into second. But right now, it's looking very good for the freshman, Raymond, who touches the wall in 125.76. She's in first. Hayon has closed in on her. She's in second. Dolores Martini from FAU in third. It's the final 50 as the freshman from Tulane looks to hold off Hayon, who had a great night last night and edged her in the 100 fly. Hayon looks really strong. Raymond got off to the great start. Raymond does it. The freshman holds off Ariel Hayon by a tenth of a second, almost two tenths, a winning time of 156.78 for the freshman from Tulane, Victoria Raymond. Raymond swam a really gutsy race. She stayed 29-6 on the third 50, and she she went for it, and it worked out. And she was being come back on a little bit in the final 50, outsplit by hand by almost a full second on the last 50. 
but she went for it and she stayed with it. She didn't fall off much. What an impressive performance by the freshman and an example of going for it, paying off and going for it in a really tough event and took a gutsy performance. And her underwater stayed outstanding. She did not swim scared whatsoever. And a first win for Tulane. That has got to feel good. Of course, we heard earlier on from Amanda Caldwell in her second year as the head coach at Tulane. Had train off campus for a couple years. But what a year it has been for the Tulane Green Wave opening up their basically completely gutted and rebuilt pool on campus and now picking up a gold in the 200 fly. Here are the top three times. And last night it was Ariel Hayon just too strong in the 100 fly. Raymond finished with the silver, but Raymond flips the script. The 100 and 200 of the strokes, you're gonna favor one or the other. They're a big enough distance discrepancy that very rarely is there a person that's equal in the 100 and 200. So Raymond had an outstanding 200. Hey, and an outstanding butterflyer that probably favors the 100. And then FAU getting in there on the podium. Impressive 158.8. We have wrapped up the individual events at the American Swimming and Diving Championships. Just one more swimming event to go, and that will be coming up tonight, the 400 free relay. And uh, also on the way, we've got our team diving event, which will be scored for the first time. A lot on the way next on the final day of the American Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. Welcome back into Dallas. Day four of the American Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. What a great weekend it has been. And the overall team standings after the individual swimming is done. Here's what it looks like. Florida International still up top. SMU trying to threaten, but they just don't have enough time to make up that kind of gap. But Rice is right there, Smacker, uh, for in third and uh, trying to threaten SMU for second, but the lack of a diving team is gonna get them in the, in the end. So it feels as though we know what, who one, two, three will be. However, you know, uh, it, sports is all about surprises. So if there's a surprise out in store for us, I, uh, I will welcome it for sure. And you gotta feel good for the Tulane Green Wave, uh, picking up the win and not only picking up the win, the freshman, getting the victory as well. And head coach Amanda Caldwell has a bright future in front for her team. It's really fun to see these teams, Tulane with a new pool, Rice adding a diving team. So much optimism and so many bright futures for the swimming and diving in this conference. Fifth place for Lauren Brentley. Fourth place for Elizabeth Myers. And now your top three ladies in the 200 yard butterfly. Bronze medal for Florida Atlantic's Dolores Martney. Silver medal for Rice University's Ariel Hayon. And your 2024 champion with a final time, 156.78. Gold for the freshman from Tulane, Victoria Raymond. Now leave the hat on. You gotta leave the hat on. I want one of those hats. The Fleur de Lee on it and all those two lane colors. That is awesome. I have a soft spot for the two lane green wave, especially when they have a Fleur de Lee on their hats. It just looks like Mardi Gras. It looks like a team that has a lot of fun on campus and Louisiana people are passionate. So you can expect that from the two lane team. Absolutely love it. Victoria Raymond, the Canadian, talked about how well she has withstood the pressures of both uh, athletic rigor and academic rigor while in New Orleans and now 
you know, the culmination of her conference season ends with a gold medal. She's with our Natalie Calipat. You're a freshman, but you swam that 200 fly like an upperclassman. How fun was that race, and what does it mean to get gold in that race? It was really fun. I, I think I was just really, like, feeding off the energy from my team. We've really been just trying to have, like, the best vibes on the deck, cheering everyone on, uplifting everyone. And I had a two back before that. They were really supportive with helping me, like, get pumped up for the two fly after. And, yeah, it just it felt amazing to do that for my team. How instrumental has the new pool been for your entire team's training? Oh, my gosh. It's been amazing. Like, just the difference between having to just walk to practice instead of commuting 20 to 30 minutes. I know a lot of the upperclassmen are so much more appreciative and just so happy about that new pool. I personally haven't felt that, like, <laughs> problem, but everyone's just so happy about it. Incredible points for your team as a whole. How does it feel your freshman year to achieve this? It's amazing. It's honestly a dream come true. I I had really high goals this year, and, you know, freshman year is a hard year. You're getting used to all these new things with college and stuff, so I'm just really happy that I was able to work through it and be here today. Congratulations on a beautiful swim. Thank you so much. She'll be able to look back on that performance, that interview, as the start of it all in her freshman campaign and more swimming to come in the postseason, you would assume, for her to represent Tulane as we put a bow on the individual competitions here in the 2024 Women's Swimming and Diving Championship. And now we turn our attention to a brand new event that will be scored for the first time. It is team diving. And all six of the teams uh, will be able to pick three divers each to be a part of this competition as we turn our attention to this event. Let's take a look at it here. Three divers from each school. There are six total dives, but two per diver, if that makes sense. So everybody has to go twice of the three divers. One dive from each category. And there are the different categories. Teams can choose to dive from one meter, three meter, and platform the standard judging and scoring rules apply. And we are just underway. This will be our second diver after Alicia Mora for FAU put up a 45.6. Sailor Hawkins from University of North Texas is on the 10 meter starting in the handstand. John, I have to say, I wish we had this event when I was diving collegiately. It's so much fun being able to team up with your teammates. Diving diving can seem like an individual sport, even though it's a team sport with swimming and diving collectively, but it's so much fun. Uh, this is our version of a relay. And we get a chance to see, yeah, all these different disciplines. And uh, off the one meter now for FIU is Ruska Leitonen. Yeah, you see the dives from all different levels. This is a really fun event. Such a great setup for these divers. Two lanes, Paige McKenzie, a senior, will come off the seven and a half meter platform for this dive. Nice control at the top for Paige. Had a nice clean rip entry, which is what the judges are looking for off the tower and the platform event. Now the judges are judging this event as they do any other event. It doesn't change their judging philosophy. It's a 30.6, and we've gotten very used to seeing this young lady, redshirt sophomore from East Carolina, Frida Zunica Guzman, who finished second in the platform, and she won the three-meter a couple nights ago. She's starting on the 10-meter with a high DD dive. call this her money dive. I watch her do it in warm-ups. I watched her nail it in prelims. I watched her nail it in finals, and here she nails it in the team event. Like clockwork, 
Eights and nines, a 73 and a half. Incredible dive and all <laughs> smiles. Yeah, I think her face says it all. And here is Jacqueline Fowler of SMU coming off the three meter. Beautiful entry. Jacqueline Fowler with these picture perfect lines, vertical up and down in the water. And you'll notice a lot of these divers are doing their hard dives. Jacqueline Fowler, beautiful top, squares it out above the springboard. Picture perfect entry. One of Fowler's best dives of this championship. So ECU in front after the first dive for each team with SMU in second and FIU in third. As we go to Alicia Mora again for FAU, she scored a 45.6 on her first dive. This time she's on the 10 meter platform. Alicia did a nice job of, even though she got a little off balance, uh, going up in that arm stand, she controlled it. And the judges noticed that, and she finishes the dive with a solid entry off the 10 meter. Here's Sailor Hawkins, the senior, maybe with her last dive as a collegiate. You never know, at least at the this competition, it is. This is a high DD dive for or rather, they're going to go to Sydney Gadar. Excuse me. The teams have the choice of whether they want to go two divers in a row or how they're going to do it. And it seems as though, yeah, uh, it's it's not going to be. It was <laughs> they they can't figure out who's going to go here because it is Sydney Gadara listed as the next one from the three meter, but Sailor Hawkins. It will be uh, Sailor Hawkins on the seven and a half. There but yes, go. again, with all the, the different levels going, it can get quite confusing. <laughs> and again, this is a high DD. Nice takeoff. I saw Sailor. She had a little bit of a weight up there on the tower, but she was looking down at the swimmers. They were sending her good vibes up there. She gets a lot of punch from her ankles, finds the come out. And Ruska from FIU will be doing the same dive and inward two and a half from the same level, the seven and a half. Love her jump off the tower. She dives fearless. She gets the most out of her ankle pop on the inward takeoff. Look at that jump. She gets a full flip done above the seven meter and she's got such beautiful lines when she enters the water. We're gonna head to the one meter now. Our next diver. Anna Bierman from Tulane. Kicks high of vertical, her legs wash by in the dive, but hey, there's still some dives left. You've got your teammates who will also pick you up. She gets a strong takeoff. See, she just kicks up a little bit high. You wanna kick that reverse just a little bit shorter so your legs can press out. Jessica Lopez from ECU. Love the entry. Such a clean rip on this double twister. Solid dive. Will be great points for East Carolina. Caitlin getting so much off the takeoff, squares it out, stops the dive. This is SMU's Ava Anderson. Really solid dive. Back one and a half pike. She controls it from the start to the finish. 
See how much power she gets off the springboard, unfolds out of that pike with a beautiful entry. So after the first two dives, ECU is out in front with a 118.5, FIU with a 106.1, and then SMU with a 103.75 here in this team diving event. And back to Florida Atlantic. Excellent back two and a half twister from Grace. And it's fun to see the strategy, you know, which divers are in this event, what dives they're competing. You know these coaches are picking their best dives and two for each diver. So you gotta narrow it down to their best dives to score the most amount of points and exactly. their highest degree of difficulty dives. Exactly, Florida Atlantic doesn't have Alicia Moore anymore because she's used both of her dives as we move to North Texas now and Bridget Kerbeck. Strong jump. Bridget is so powerful. She's happy with those scores. 47-15. Big jump, tight pike, unfolds. Pike saves just perfectly on the bottom of that dive to stop it. And on to FIU. We know yet this young lady, Paige Burrell, who won the one meter on Thursday. It's no surprise to us that Paige is doing a dive on the one meter, as you mentioned. She did win the one meter springboard individual the other day. Strong dive from start to finish, commanding top, slides out of that dive and bike saves it. A 54 for FIU's Paige Burrell as we move on to Tulane. This is also on the one meter. A big dive. Uh, Heidi D, a double twister on one meter. You'll see women do this dive on three meter. Katie does a good job of getting right into the twist, and she twists so quickly. She's so efficient on her twisters. And that's how she's able to complete the dive on one meter. Katie Lipsy with a 42.9 on that dive. So we go back to ECU and the second dive for Jessica Lopez, I believe. Or rather, this is Olivia Templeton. My apologies. We're seeing a lot of the, the back one and a half pikes on one meter. It's a strong category for a lot of these divers. Nice takeoff. Does a good job of stopping that dive underwater. And SMU bringing in their secret weapon. I don't know if it's so secret <laughs> in Stambo. Stambo, who won the platform diving event yesterday, she is on the 10 meter, and you know she's going high DD here. Big dive, a great dive for her, John. We saw her consistency yesterday on the platform individual competition, just hitting her dive after dive. Great control at the top of the arm stand and mirror finish. Nicole is so solid on platform. And on the 57-6, that puts SMU in front. It is very tight, just two points, less than two points separating one, two, and three. SMU, FIU, ECU in that order as we go back to Florida Atlantic on the one meter here. Beautiful entry and, and pike for Grace on this dive. She does a good job of getting a good takeoff, squaring the dive out. Grace Powell with a 46.8 out of that one. Good number. So we go to North Texas and Bridget Kerbeck again. It's on the three meter. Sydney is a freshman. She's so powerful. She does big dives. 
She finaled in the three meter the other day. Look at this takeoff. The height she gets at the end of the springboard squares the dive out, leaves it just a hair short of straight up and down. As she patiently, anxiously, and eagerly waits for her scores. <laughs> So and Sydney Gadara, who finished with a silver medal in the three meter. Now they gave us a rotation that they are going out of rotation from what they gave us. And so that <laughs> makes it just a little bit difficult, but we are, we are efforting to, to stay alongside. We do see Michaela Starr. Starr actually won a D2 championship nationally last year while at uh, Indianapolis. But uh, it does seem like there's been a scoring system issue, and as they try to get that rebooted, um, we are waiting for the ability to start this next dive. I know what that feeling's like. You do your dive, and you're like, well, what's wrong with my scores? Why am <laughs> I causing this? Did I do something with my dive that, that caused this anticipation? It's not fun. We went ahead and did the control alt delete and restarted things. And while things have not quite caught up on the scoreboard as of yet, they will get caught up as we go on. Fives and fives and a halves for uh, Sydney Gadara. As once again, we go to Michaela Starr for FIU. And it's hard if you're Michaela Starr waiting on the board. You know, you're used to going, 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 and, you know, getting on the board and just getting set, getting ready to go. So it's difficult to be in this position and, you know, keep yourself mentally and physically in that motion, Lord in that Lord movement. Lord. This is a back one and a half somersault, two and a half twist off the three meter for Starr. Just kicks it out a little bit short. I said this in the three meter individual event, the back and reverse category are so pivotal on three meter. She picks, goes down for her legs on the takeoff, which causes her to kick a little bit short. She didn't spin as fast as if she let her legs go up to her arms. And we move on to Tulane through the first three dives. Tulane with 96.6 total, which was last out of the six four the four diving four, competitors. Four, four, four and a half. By the way, is, by the way, fours and four and a halves on that last dive Tulane, for Michaela four, Starr. And obviously she went with the two and a half. So we look up to the seven and a half for Paige McKenzie of Tulane. Love Paige's push off the tower. Again, that fearless takeoff, getting that jump, not being afraid to use your ankles Four, on five, the takeoff. Four, five, five. Goes a little bit past straight up and down. Fours and fives on her score as we head back to ECU. And this one coming off the three meter springboard for Jessica Lopez. it off just a hair on the takeoff causes her to kick it a little bit short you can see she's disappointed she knows she can do this better just pushes her hips back and then on the entry leaves it a little bit short you see she did that motion of pushing her hips back you want to pop those hips up and over the board and SMU 
heading into their fourth dive. This is Jacqueline Fowler off the three meter spring. Oh, I love Jacqueline's back and gainers on the three meters. She's such a beautiful diver. She's so consistent with these dives. And she kicks out like a voluntary. You see this height she gets, two flips above the board, just comes out of it like it's a reverse dive pike. Her fundamentals and her technique are supreme. Six and a halfs for Jacqueline Fowler on her final dive. We're here in the fourth dive of six. Or that was the fourth dive of six. Now back to the top to FAU. This is Selena Staudenhurst, the senior, coming off the one meter. That dive, you see, she doesn't push her hips out a little bit too much on the takeoff and then kicks it short. If your hips come out that far on, on the takeoff, you want to hold on a little bit longer because you cut your jump off of the springboard. Four and a half there, and another dive off the one meter springboard. This one for North Texas, coming from Bridget Kerbeck. Love the takeoff on this dive. Just in the air, she lost her legs, which probably caused her to lose some control in the air. See, in the pike, she just loses her legs a little bit, slips out of the dive, and the legs wash past straight up and down. Lots of four and a halfs on that dive as we move on to Tulane. Coming off of the three and a half meter, or the three meter springboard, I should say, of course, for this dive. Oh, no. Nope. Going right back up top here for FIU. My apologies. Right back up to the top. Ruska with her beautiful entries, those rips, her lines. She does a great job of showing the control at the top of the handstand, three seconds holding it, squares out of the dive and puts it away. So Ruska Leitonen with that most recent dive and now to Tulane on the three meter springboard. Solid dive from start to finish here. On the takeoff, stays on the start. Head goes a little bit back, but she finds the entry and kicks right where she needs to to hit the vertical mark. Six and a halfs and sixes. And now to East Carolina. Olivia Templeton needing to restart. That restart will count as a ball, which two points will be deducted from each judge because she started and then she stopped. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't get a good hurdle. You see she would slip on that first step but you just have to go. And in training, a lot of the coaches will say, no matter what your takeoff is, you just have to go after the dive because if you're in a meet, you can't stop. All right, this is the last dive of the fifth round and it's Ava Anderson off the one meter for SMU. entry from Ava, her lines. She does a nice job standing this dive up, squaring it out, and just squeezing for that entry. An average of about six and a half on that one. She also had a six low, but a seven and a half high 
And so a very nice dive there by Ava Anderson as we go back to FAU and Selena Staudenhurst. It's the last dive for Florida Atlantic in this team diving event. Great jump, great takeoff, and a solid come out of this back two and a half. Excellent top, shoulders over, kicks a little bit high, so she washes past that vertical mark. So fives and fives and a half. By the way, heading into this sixth round, SMU is in front. ECU and then FIU right behind. Oh my gosh, that, what a money dive. For Sydney, she's a freshman, but dives like an upperclassman. Look at this hurdle, the power. She actually goes up to the five meter. That's how strong she is. And that's how much jump she gets out of the three meter. She can't believe it. She does have Five and a half, seven, seven, six, and a five and a half. Outstanding dive and a great opening conference championship for Sydney Gadara. Back to Paige Burrell to try to close one out for FIU. Again, FIU in third, just behind ECU and SMU, heading into the sixth and final dive. I've talked about this before with Paige. She has so much power, and on that dive, she just did not control the bottom. Beautiful takeoff. Gets right into the twist, then the flip. Puts her head down on the entry and washes past that dive. We know what she can do on that dive, so I know she's a little bit disappointed. Four and a halfs to five and a halfs on that dive. Meanwhile, we go to Tulane and Katie Lipsy to close out for Tulane on the three meter. Great finish for Katie and, and for Tulane as well. Katie does a good job on this takeoff, getting her arms all the way through, squaring out of the dive. Now, ECU, I we do not know exactly the standings right now. I've got to pull back the curtain because uh, there has been an issue with the numbers, not that they're not being recorded. But we do believe that ECU is behind SMU, not by a, a margin that's, that can't, can't be overcome by this young lady, Frida Zuniga Guzman. But this is a huge dive for her as they try to catch SMU. Excellent dive from Frida. From the top of the dive, the top of the handstand, she shows this control. Look at this hold, a solid three seconds, which is what the judges want to see. Gets a nice push off of the platform, squares it out. And a clean ripped entry for Frida. Sevens, seven and a halfs, and eights for Frida Zuniga Guzman. And now here's the closer for SMU, Nicole Stambo, trying to keep SMU in front in the team diving competition. Her specialty off the 10 meter platform. Oh, one of her money dives, putting her, her best dive last. Nicole certainly finishes on a high note here with this back twisting. Beautiful dive from top to bottom. So a seven and a half, seven, six and seven. And again, we are efforting to figure out exactly where the standings were North Texas certainly reacted as though 
or excuse me, SMU certainly reacted as though they're at the end. They thought that might have been enough to get it done. And for ECU, they're right up there as well. We will come back with the final diving awards. We'll find out, was it SMU or East Carolina? Coming up next. The 2024 Women's Basketball Championships begin Saturday, March 9th from Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. All games through the semifinals will air on ESPN Plus while the championship airs on ESPNU on Wednesday, March 13th. And for full tournament information, visit theamerican.org. If you're an AAC fan, you got to have it. Sign up at ESPNplus.com slash AAC. Welcome back into Dallas. We just finished up the first ever scored team diving event in American Athletic Conference history and a surprise number two. How about that? It became really close right uh, under SMU. Now SMU ends up running away with it with a total of 331.15. Just outstanding depth between the three SMU divers, including the, the two world-class ones who have been on the podium during this uh, tournament. But I tell you, Ava Anderson was also good as well. North Texas finishes in second with a couple clutch dives by their freshmen, Sydney Gadara, Bridget Kerbeck, and Sailor Hawkins helping out too. And then FIU finishes just behind North Texas in third. Ruska Leitonen, Michaela Starr, and Paige Burrell contributing to that effort. And surprisingly, ECU finishes in fourth. I wasn't an issue with Rita Zuniga Guzman. She was absolutely money. Just a, a couple of miscues on other dives for ECU kept them off the podium. But again, it goes SMU, UNT, FIU as uh, we wait for uh, the presentations. But again, an outstanding performance by the SMU Mustangs in this team diving event. Yeah, they did an excellent job. Consistency, the dominance on all the different levels. They just won the battle of consistency on the one meter, the three meter, and the platform. So it was a job well done uh, for SMU earning this team win. I mean, obviously just an outstanding job by the anchors, so to speak. Uh, the, the more well-known names, but the freshman stepped up for SMU and she dove really well too, I thought, in Ava Anderson. Yes, Ava is a tremendous talent stepping up for her team, doing a great job on the dives that she competed on the one meter. And I thought Darian Schmidt, the coach of the SMU Mustangs diving, he did a good job of placing these divers and putting their best dives in because each diver can only do two dives. So Ava was on one meter, Jacqueline did her dives on three meter, and then Nicole on platform. We saw yesterday she won the platform event. She's so good, the higher up she goes. So perfect placement from Coach Schmidt. Just outstanding stuff. And another team gold for the SMU Mustangs. All smiles. Thumbs up for Nicole Stambo. It's got to feel good for her. I, it, not that she didn't dive well on the, the first two nights here, but it was one of those situations where she did not, um, you know, medal like she wanted to. And she wins the platform, and then she's a big part of the team win as well on the final night. So Nicole Stambo, Ava Anderson, and... Jacqueline Fowler, the winning trio for the SMU Mustangs, who take this team diving event in Dallas and do so in pretty dominant fashion, outpacing UNT by a good uh, 44 points. Let's go ahead and go to our public address. The awards and staging area. And since the scoreboard went out, here are your top three. We need Ford International, North Texas, and SMU. Over to the awards podium, please. Dive teams, SMU, North Texas, Florida International, the awards podium, please. Looks like we have SMU and North Texas over there. They have caught wind of uh, their dominance. Hey, Walter Lugan. We're good to go. All right, folks, if you direct your attention over to the awards podium, we're going to recognize our team diving. 
And it was a sixth place finish for Tulane with 234.3. Fifth place with 255.3, Florida Atlantic. Fourth place with 274.05, ECU. And now your top three teams out of the women's team diving competition. With 287.2, bronze medal finish for Florida International. With 287.3, silver medal for North Texas. And your 2024 champions with 331.15 points. Jacqueline Fowler, Nicole Stambo, Ava Anderson, SMU. SMU Mustangs, gold medalists in team diving. Outstanding work by that trio. And again, North Texas just edging out FIU to pick up the silver medal as well by a whisker. But when it came to the gold, it was SMU by a mile. And a picture that will go up there on the mantle for years and years for these kids. See the joy on the faces as we wrap up the diving events here over the four days in Dallas. And these diving events have been an incredible display. And Natalie Calavat has had a chance to be our analyst for it. And she stands by with our winners from SMU. Ladies, first time the team event was being scored. How good does this gold medal feel? It feels great. This is a really fun event. Just to get these many points for the team was awesome. You all did your part and focused on each one of your dives. Can you take us through your focus? Um, I think we all just put in what we had to and it worked out in the end. Yeah, it was great. We knew what we had to do. We were up against great divers, so it was, like, it was really fun. Yeah, none of us missed a dive, so it really paid off, and we won gold, so we're excited. Consistency, the name of the game. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we are turn our attention to the finale, the final event of the 2024 American Athletic Conference Championships, the 400 freestyle relay. The bottom of your screen, North Texas. Shayna McLeod, Samantha Robles, Emily Alley, and Noelle Marsh. ECU, second, Carly Clements, Michaela Durkin, Emily Hamlin, and Heidi Bruning. Rice in lane three with the iconic Imogen Mears, Mimi Filkin, Elizabeth Myers, and then Lily Kramer on the anchor leg. For SMU, it's Lucrezia Napolitano in lane four along with Johanna Goodman's daughter, Tiffany Ruin, and then Indra Vandenbush on the anchor leg. FIU's Deanna Santa Maria, Umi Diop, Anna Luisa Desan, and Christy Chewy back out there looking to win another gold. Florida Atlantic, Bri Belisle, Izzy Jones, Maggie Casey, Julia Earnshaw, and for Tulane, it's Osetu, Hattie Polu, Victoria Raymond, Grace Dale, and Andrea Zibi. Smacker, this is a fun way to finish it out. 100 yards each on the freestyle relay. This is the most popularly DQ'd race because if you can't move down, but you could move up based on placement, sometimes the coaches will tell you to really let it fly on the relay starts. So it depends on your placement and where you are as a team, but this can be a fun one and it's an outstanding way to close out the meet. And of course, with FIU having wrapped up the team championship heading into this, that's another reason to kind of let it all fly for all these teams. Absolutely. Last one, fast one is a common swimming phrase, whether it's on session or on the event. And here we go. It is just that. 
FIU won this one in 2023 in 318. SMU won it in 2022. And the second leg, SMU is in front just barely on Rice, and in third place is FIU. The 400 freestyle relay. And for SMU, it's Johanna Guman's daughter on this particular leg. And she's got a nice little lead on her left on Naomi Filkin of Rice. And Umi Diop as well out there for FIU on her left. The final 25. And we understand we are undergoing some technical difficulties. Not that you want to have it in the 400 freestyle relay. I will try to relay to you, if you will, what's happening. As SMU touches the wall first through the first 200, and the third leg begins, followed by Rice and FIU. SMU's Tiffany Room is leading this leg. As we are back to live, we apologize for the technical difficulties. SMU in front by a length on Rice and a length and a half on Florida International right now. This looks as though it would be SMU's to lose right now, Smacker. We knew how good SMU was in the 100 free from the 100 free individual event. They had five people in that final, so their four top swimmers were four of the top eight in the conference. They are the team to beat right now with the body length lead, and it's going to take something miraculous to come back on them. Indra Vandenbush, the senior for SMU, trying to bring it home. And in second place right now is Rice, and they put Lily Kramer on the anchor leg with Christy Chewy on the anchor leg for Florida International. She specializes in other strokes, but she's out there trying to win a sixth gold. However, it is SMU right now as we turn to the final lap. The final 50, and FIU, Chewy has closed in and gotten to second, but still two seconds behind the leaders in SMU as Vandenbush turns for home in the final 25, followed by FIU and then Rice. The crowd swells as Vandenbush leans in in the 400 free relay, and SMU wins, followed by Chewy and FIU. Rice in third in the 400 free relay in Dallas. An impressive swim by the Mustangs. They're strong across the board, top to bottom, very deep in the 100 free. Their split difference between their first split and their fourth split is not going to be much. And that pays off for them. Their second and third legs are really able to win the event for them. When other people have weaknesses, they don't have any. SMU has now won this event a record five times in American Athletic Conference history as they bid farewell to the conference. And the foursome of Lucrecia Napolitano, Johanna Guman's daughter, Tiffany Ruin, and Indra Vandenbush get it done in the 400 relay. And it may not be enough points to overtake FIU for the conference championship. However, it is a good way to finish for Ozzy Quevedo's team. Always fun to finish on a win, and there's only one event that, that makes that possible. So convenient time to have amazing sprinters and be strong top to bottom and know that you're going to have a lot of fun in the last event. I think Christy Chewy made up about a second on Indra Vandenbush on that final 50 yards. She is an unbelievable athlete. It may not be gold this time, but another silver, and Randy Horner's team is poised to officially be champions moments from now. I double-checked it was her just to make sure that that was the stroke that I was seeing, her ability to pick up the tempo on the freestyle and to really get up and go from a sprint standpoint. And she comes back in 25-1. It's unbelievable. The rest of the field is 26 low, 26 mid, or above. As much as Christy Chewy has given, it seems like she's got more in the tank. But SMU built on speed. This roster that was victimized by a disqualification in a record-setting pace in the 
200 relay. Ends up with a championship in the 400 freestyle relay. Quite a way to close it out for SMU here in the 2024 American Athletic Conference Championships. Great to see Vandenbush getting draped with the Belgian flag. She was part of a 400 free and 200 free relay win back in 2022, and she's got a championship again this time around. Coach Quevedo talked about how their team trains with their sprint focus and how they're heavily focused on dry land and in the weight room. When they walk by after the race, you can see the athleticism and the power and their speed off the blocks just playing out before your eyes. They look like sprinters. On the way, we'll have the medal ceremony for the 400 free. We'll have interviews and then the overall podium presentation. The 400 free, uh, freestyle relay finals go to SMU in a time of 317.65, topping Florida International by less than a second and Rice at a 319.83. It's always fun to finish with speed. It's fun to finish with this team event as well. It's fun to finish with the relay where everyone who's not in the relay is then with the meet. So they get to be on the deck and focused on cheering and enjoying the moment. And then everyone left in the meet has the spotlight on them and their team counting on them. So it's a fun situation that for everyone involved. I thought it was interesting and uh, not second guessing in the, in the least that uh, Rice went with Imogen Mears to start the event and, and try to get out to a lead perhaps. Didn't quite work out for them though. Um, uh, their strongest sprint swimmer uh, outpaced by Lucrecia Napolitano of SMU early. It kind of depends from a strategic standpoint. Sometimes it's literally about giving someone the extra two minutes if they already had an event right before. Sometimes it's also based on who has the best relay start or the safest relay start. So they tend to be minute details because mm. any of the sprinters are expected to have a solid relay start. They spend a lot of time on that in practice and have a lot of drills that focus on it. So those minute details can factor in and could have had something to do with it. She might like swimming in clean water. She might have asked to open it up. It all depends, but it was an interesting decision that we do not have all of the insight on. With a final time of 3.19.83, bronze medal finish for Rice University. And with the finals time of 3.18.41, silver for Florida International. And your 2024 champions with a finals time 317 to 65. Lucrezia Napolitano, Joanna Goodman's daughter, Tiffany Ruan, Indra Vandebush, gold for SMU. And the final conference memory for these Mustangs will be standing atop the podium in first place. Hearing their fight song played inside of their own natatorium, SMU tops the podium in the 400 freestyle relay, FIU in second place, and Rice in third. A lot of great moments. <laughs> A lot of great moments as a part of this four-day event. And 
I just love the individual memories that each of these athletes are making as a part of competing here in Taos. These memories and these moments also help in recruiting. So these student athletes will be hosting recruits at some point and talking about these moments and the fun they had with their teams. And for SMU, they focus on sprinting. They have great sprinters and they will continue to use these pictures of the gold and the top of the podium to lure in more talent. The SMU Mustangs champs in the 400 yard freestyle relay after having a record setting performance ripped away from them earlier in this meet. But uh, the 400 free, they're champions and they're with our Natalie Caliban. Ladies, it's not how you start, it's how you finish and you finish with a gold. How memorable was that swim for you all? I think it was great because we all wanted to win this one and we did it. We were very like excited to zoom in and we did it for our team. And so finish up like with a first place, it's just amazing. Indra, Johanna, your seniors, this was your last conference championship meet. Take us through the emotions. I couldn't be more proud of this team. I couldn't be more proud to have this really to end it off with a good on, on a good note. And I'm so, so overly happy. Yeah, this is me and Johanna's fourth year in a row that we like won this relay. So this is a very special place of our heart. You're kind of good at it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting the hang of it. <laughs> you can say that. Congratulations, ladies. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Congratulations to the SMU Mustangs. who come up a little bit short in their quest to win a conference championship. However, SMU with a nice build toward the future. Here are the overall team standings and Florida International does more than hold on on the final day smacker. They uh, make it uh, a statement, if you will. They talked about 4-1. They wanted to win this championship and FIU has done it. They made quite the statement with this championship. They were dominant in many events. And they were consistent as well. They didn't have DQs, they swam smart, and they delivered when it mattered. What an impressive weekend for them. Wow, they've already got the hats printed and everything. That's exciting. <laughs> I love it. Championship hats for the FIU Panthers, who are champions of the American Athletic Conference. And, and Randy Horner has built just a culture of winning. I mean, Conference USA Championship after Conference USA Championship nearly were able to take down the powerhouse of Houston last season. What do you think this feels like for these FIU athletes after such a, a grueling year and to accomplish this key goal? It's natural for a team to win based on their overall ability. And they're, you know, Rice really focused on distance swimming and butterfly. And then you had SMU who really focused on sprint freestyle. And FIU was able to do it all. They had people in every stroke. They had people in every distance. They had people in consolation finals and in the top heat. They had five finalists in the, in the 200 breaststroke tonight. So they were very consistent each day. And a lot of teams have strengths on one day, but not another. They were strong across the board. And a big nod to FIU as well, because you remember how big we felt the 200-yard freestyle relay DQ was for SMU, it would have put them ahead after day two. Well, in the end, FIU leaves no doubt, and their margin of victory is well beyond what SMU would have gained from that victory. I think that's a great point as far as the FIU knowing they really did it on their own. It wasn't that SMU had made a mistake that cost them. It was that FIU was the better team. So that's a very validating fact for the Panthers. And the Panthers were great in so many different events. They won all three on the first night. Remember, go all the way back to Thursday, uh, winning the 200-yard medley relay, and then the one-meter diving with Paige Burrell. Man, her points really, really helped during this event. Uh, 800-yard freestyle relay championship for FIU. And then you had Christy Chewy going three individual golds plus two more golds on relays and another silver on relay. Um, you know, just their, their butterfly exploits and the 200 butterfly that we saw earlier on today uh, where they had uh, just 
FIU Panther after FIU Panther the top five times in the prelims. This is an all-around championship for FIU. FIU would have a very impressive stroke mid-distance sets. They would have talent all across the pool, and they might be on different intervals, but they're all dominating that set that day. And they have a lot of leadership on their team as well. They're well coached, technically sound, and they're very, they have great stamina as well. They were strong. I mean, they looked like they did the work. Championships, nothing new to Christy Chewy and company. But uh, for the FIU Panthers, I'm sure it just means a little bit more to move into a new league and take a title. That was added motivation for them to say we are here and this is who we are. And they delivered on that in a huge way. And there's something about really standing out when you're tapered because midseason meets can be misleading at times depending on who's more tapered or less tapered or who put more, more focus on the event. Now to the awards presentation. Right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please direct your attention to the awards podium area for our individual and team award presentations. And again, congratulations to all of the American Athletic Conference student athletes that have competed here this week. We kick things off with the awards presentation for your Diving Coach of the Year. Your 2024 Co-Diving Coaches of the Year from SMU, Darian Schmidt. And from Florida International, Josh Larkholm. Get co-diving coach of the years this year. Well, he's so jacked now, he can't move very fast. <laughs> They're talking about SMU co-diving coach Darian Schmidt being called out for his muscles. I'd love to be called out for my muscles once. <laughs> I'll, Just I'll once. arm wrestle you for the trophy. <laughs> I'm sure it's in your future, John. Uh, Thank you. I co appreciate you believing in Coaches of the year, SMU's Darian Schmidt, Florida Nationals, Josh Larkholm. And now for the awards presentation for our Swimming Coach of the Year. Your 2024 American Conference Swimming Coach of the Year from Florida International, Randy Horner. His staff includes Josh Larkholm, Brian Moffitt, and Denora Diaz. A no doubter, Randy Horner was a seven-time Conference USA Coach of the Year. And he wins the American Coach of the Year this season. That had to be a no-brainer, right, John? I didn't even think about it. Now it's time to recognize the most outstanding performers of this year's championship. The 2024 Freshman of the Year from Tulane, Victoria Raymond. Remember, Raymond was able to take home our final individual event of the day and did so with an impressive time. The 200 fly champion. The 2024 most outstanding diver from East Carolina, Frida Zuniga Guzman. I think Frida captured some hearts this weekend. What do you think? She captured mine. She was so much fun to listen to after she won. And holding off some incredible divers like uh, Stambo and Burrell. It's got to feel good for the sophomore. And the 2024 most outstanding swimmer from Florida International, Christy Chewy. Another one we didn't have to think about much. What do you think about this performance by Chewy this weekend? 
She's an outstanding swimmer. Her technique and her strength says everything. She's strong. She can do the IM. She's a great breaststroker. The breaststroke is probably the toughest stroke technically, and she does that really well. So her actual accolades as far as in the pool and on the podium make a lot of sense. And now for the championship she seems like a great trophy leader presentation. Too. Congratulations to our 2024 American Athletic Conference Women's Swimming and Diving Champions, the Panthers of Florida International. F you could please come forward to accept your championship team trophy. All they've been talking about is 4-1, meaning the number one, and also swimming for each other as well. And Randy Horner's bunch, they got it done, really stayed focused all throughout the weekend, didn't make mistakes, swam some of their best times ever, led by Christy Chewy and others. Florida International, the American Conference champions in 2024. Man, what does it take to build a dynasty like Randy Horner has in Southern Florida? You recruit for the best of each event and you spread out the scholarship money and the plans that way. You recruit to having the best of the best in each stroke so you can put together the medley relays and you have people in every final. They know all about Speed and power and commitment in Miami. And a social media moment for the ages there. The 2024 Swimming and Diving Championship in the American goes to the FIU Panthers. What a night. What an overall weekend for FIU. Congratulations to the Panthers. For efforting to catch Randy Horner, I think we have finally caught up with the most popular man in town. The FIU Panther head coach is standing by with our Natalie Calabat. Coach, you certainly got revenge, came up a little bit short last year, but from start to finish, your Panthers dominated this conference championship. How sweet is it? Yeah, it feels really good. It was a hard fought loss last year, and it was always something we've been working for all since last year, the quest for one to win our first AAC championship, and it just feels good. The ladies worked so hard, put so much into it, and uh, they deserve it. You've been a part of so many conference championships. What was special about this one? It's our first, you know, it's the first AAC championship after coming short again, you know, and coming back, uh, you know, you don't take it for granted. And uh, it's just something special with this team, this group that came together. They were amazing, uh, their atmosphere, and they fueled each other as a full team effort for sure. And a total team effort, but the seniors, Christy Chewy, these women going out with such special swims. Can you say something about your senior group? Yeah, this senior group's amazing. I mean, they're leaders, they're special. Um, you know, Chewy, her performances speak for themselves. You know, what an athlete. Uh, you know, we still got some unfinished business at NCA as, as well in a few weeks. But, uh, but no, it was amazing. Uh, you know, I take my hat off to these leaders, and they helped us win the championship. We'll let you do your victory jump. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Congratulations to FIU and Randy Horner. This group about as special as it gets. And they're going in. It's time for everybody else to get in too. As Randy Horner takes off that. Takes off that tie and he gets ready to do the jump as well. Just a special, special night for the FIU Panthers. We bring Natalie Calabat back in. Natalie, I know you've been on deck with 
these FIU Panthers talking to them after all of these wins. We get a one final jump. <laughs> what, what's the mood been like among this special group of athletes over the course of this weekend? I have to say hungry and confident in talking to the diving coach, specifically <laughs> Josh Larkham. He said after they lost by 11.5 points last year, he's had a sign on his office that said that. So they had that bad taste from last year. They wanted revenge. They've come in here and they have been dominant throughout. One more time. Here's for the athletic director, Scott Carr. <laughs> He's doing his jump. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. You got to get everybody in on the act. Congratulations to FIU. The Florida International Panthers 2024 American Athletic Conference Swimming and Diving Championships. Smacker, what would you think about this weekend? I mean, that celebration to top it off, that's all I can think about right now. And they deserved every bit of it. The belly flops by the coaches, it looked like they were going in by class. And then they got the coaches and the athletic director. And how special to have the head of the athletic department at your meet to celebrate your first American Athletic Conference Championship. <laughs> what a moment for He's FIU. Like, yeah, this is hard. This swimming stuff, man. Meanwhile, uh, how would you score those belly flops, Natalie? Hey, there is no such thing as belly flopping and diving, but it was, I give it a 10 for, for effort and fun, but I got to say, I'm very impressed with, I mean, treading water is not easy. So this is a, a really, um, a really strong group of uh, swimmers, coaches, you know, um, medical staff. I mean, everyone's in there and some of the ladies even have their hats on still. So uh, a proud moment for the Panthers. It started at the beginning of the season, the off season, training, fighting, and just wanting to come in here and win. And they, they got the job done. Boy, they did. Four nights of action culminating with a championship for Florida International for the first time in the American Athletic Conference. Big thanks to everybody that's been a part of this broadcast over the last four evenings. Smacker Miles, Natalie Calabat. I've been your host, John Little. Congratulations to Florida International. All games airing on ESPN, and the networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the American Athletic Conference and ESPN.